<laughs> Let me say a couple of things real quick. First, let me start with everybody settle down. We did um, three, we did three rallies today, Herman Cain rallies in Ohio. Um, and I always get the question, why are you going to Ohio and some of these other states? The answer is, they matter. This primary is not going to be over in the first two or three. This is an important state, but we wanted to make sure that we also had a footprint in those other states. Let me tell you what happened in Ohio, which is very similar to what's happening here tonight. The turnout and the response was overwhelming. Uh -huh. Woo! After the latest firestorm that hit on Monday, remember this is my third one now, they keep coming after me. After that latest firestorm, there were some people who thought that I was finished. But I'm going to leave it with Yogi Barrow's comment. It ain't over till it's over, and it ain't over yet. <laughs> say about that and I have told people that over the next several days I and my team but particularly my family we're going through a reassessment that's what you do as a business person you go through a reassessment and that's exactly what we're doing if you have a business and it hits a bump in the road you reassess you reevaluate we're reevaluating uh, the, the impact on my family and that's number one, folks. Secondly, we're reevaluating my supporters. You all are an example of the support that I have all over this country. And we're going to reevaluate, you know, our donors. Because as you know, campaigns don't run on air. But we're going to reevaluate that. And this is the part that a lot of entities don't understand, we're going to reevaluate our campaign strategy. There's more than one right way to win. And so based upon everything that's going on, we're going to reevaluate that. And as you know, New Hampshire is a big part of our strategy. It always will be. New Hampshire is not going to go away. So we're in a reevaluation phase. When I'm asked, how long is that going to take? Well, it's going to take another few days. Because as a business person, you don't do a knee-jerk reaction. You collect all of the facts. You evaluate all of the facts. You consider all of the information that you need before you make a decision. Folks, that's the way I would run this country. Some people have a problem with that. That I am going to consider the facts, talk to the appropriate parties, and then make a necessary decision. But I can tell you right now that no, you know, the first day that this hit, what some people expected was for me to immediately drop out of this race. I don't do things like that. Let me tell you why. I believe that America is sick of character assassination. Just yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 I believe that the people are sick of that. And so I wasn't going to make a decision just based upon the attack. No. We're dealing with it. We're analyzing it. And then we will do what we need to do in order to let the American people know that I've been telling the truth. It is bad when you are convicted in the court of public opinion based upon accusations. Based upon accusations. But I'm not going to focus on that. Here's what I want to focus on. And one of the other reasons that I believe <coughs> that we were attacked this week and when we were attacked before it because it always happens when I'm getting ready to put a big idea on the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the other time it was 999. But they couldn't stop 999. No, because no, a lot of people still, a lot of people know what it is. 
And if you have not seen it yet, <laughs> this week, 999 The Movie. Woo! Woo! On HermanCain.com. And it's only five minutes long. This week, a couple of days ago, it's today, Wednesday or Thursday, guys. Wednesday. <laughs> I don't remember what day it is. I was, at, I was at Hillsdale <laughs> College, and I rolled out our national security foreign policy strategy. Remember, I'm not supposed to know much about that. Yeah. See, they, think, they think that I don't do my homework. Let me give you a brief synopsis of it, Sorry. because I'm very proud of what we have come up with. And I presented it at Hillsdale College on yesterday. And that's one of the biggest messages that I wanted to roll out. We did 999 a few weeks ago because the economy is on life support. We're doing national security and foreign policy because of all of the problems and situations we're involved in around the world. And I wanted people to understand. And then we got a third one that we're going to roll out in another one or two weeks. We're going to save that one. It's called the trifecta. <laughs> There are three major plans, three major strategies, national security and foreign policy. <clears throat> Nate, you got the water? Got you. Oh, thank you. So here, here's how, thank you, sir. Here's how we are approaching national security and foreign policy. It starts with an overriding philosophy. And it is an extension of the Reagan philosophy, which is peace through strength and clarity. What that means is the United States of America has always had a mission of peace. We lead the world in helping to promote and protect peace. That's our mission. Our strategy is Strength, military strength, economic strength, and moral strength. Right now, our military is weakened. We are going to strengthen our military because my priority will not be cut, cut, cut. My priority will be invest, invest, invest in our military so we can make the best military in the world even better rather than always cutting. And a big part of that is going to reestablish the shuttle program because I don't like the fact yeah. that we have Amen. to thumb arrive to get into our yeah. yeah. So we're going to re-strengthen our military. Yes, we're going to reprioritize, but we are going to re-strengthen our military. Our economy, you already know about 999. That's going to get this economy going in a big way. And then our moral strength. There are some people who want to take God out of our culture, but we're not going to allow them to take God out of our culture. heard me say before that we need some clarity. Yeah. <laughs> Peace through strength and clarity. Here's where the clarity come in. We must clarify who our enemies are, clarify who our friends are, and stop giving money to our enemies. Yeah. The reason we need to clarify who our friends are is so we can tell the rest of the world who we are going to stand with yep. like Israel because they are our friends. Yeah. Now from that philosophy, then you establish a very clear relationship with every country in the world, especially our friends and especially our foes. And you can find that on the website, HermanCain.com where we have taken that philosophy and applied it to the top 20 countries in the world that we have a relationship with. Because see, if we have a clear understanding of what the relationship is, when something happens, we already know what we're going to do. Because one of the guiding principles <clears throat> that I will always use whenever we are trying to be, <coughs> excuse me, 
this is only my sixth time today talking. <laughs> slow day, huh? Yeah, slow day. Saving the best for last. That's right. That's right. Saving the best for last. And the reason, see, and, and, and the reason that I want it all clear is because we are in some wars around this globe. We're in Afghanistan. We're in Iraq. Okay? We, we got involved in the whole Libyan conflict and this sort of thing. And that's not turning out the way that I think a lot of people wanted it to turn out. But the thing that I would do as part of this overall arching strategy, is that before I send men and women in uniform into war, the mission would be clear. Mm -hmm. uh, the interests of the United States will be clear. And the definition of victory will be clear. Yeah. Because they want to uh, know yeah. how to win. They win. And so if you have those guiding principles, then you talk to the commanders in the field. You talk to the intelligence experts. You talk with the Joint Chiefs of Staff. <clears throat> I had a meeting just two days ago with the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, giving me some insight on some of the things that we need to be concerned about. Because, see, one of the things that some people make the mistake of is they don't think that I'm doing my homework. No, I'm doing my homework, and I'm talking to people that have been former ambassadors to the United Nations, former secretaries of state, former S S secretary of defense former generals who've been in the military to gather the perspective that helped to create this overarching philosophy about how we deal with foreign policy and national security. National security is the president's number one responsibility is to protect this country. And the best way you protect this country is to make sure that we've got the, the best and most capable military in the world and then you make the right decisions. Ronald Reagan, one of our greatest presidents, he demonstrated the power of military strength. When he said to Gorbachev, tear down that wall, he brought an end to the Cold War without firing a shot. Why? Because of our military might. And they knew around the world that it wasn't a might if Reagan needed to use it that he would use it if necessary. We've lost that, and we can get that back. So I just want to say, so I just want to say again, thanks. It ain't over till it's over. A few of our warm weather supporters have, you know, gotten off the cane train, but the good news is many of our solid supporters are still on and once we clear up this most recent accusation, I think a lot of people are going to see it for what it was worth. And then once we do that, we're still going to work hard to do well here in the great state of New Hampshire. So thank you all so much for being here. Fundraising, we're gonna, we're gonna do fundraising is picking up again. Yep, fundraising is definitely picking up again. We can get all the members of the media. Crop TV.